I love that this assignment said do a video because I think it definitely encapsulates what the idea is behind the discussion of universal design for learning. So I am going to do a video and a presentation because this is something I feel very comfortable in doing. So what is universal design for learning? That was the question. How do you answer it? And it, it is a framework. It's a framework that says not everybody's the same. And that because people have diverse needs and diverse abilities, you can remove the barriers to learning by providing people with a way to learn that is conducive to their own personal styles, abilities, and diversities. And this can be categorized and done in three ways. Representation, engagement, action and expression. Now, engagement, the first one, is getting students to want to participate. You get students that are engaged, then they are going to like to learn. So there are different opportunities for student involvement when you follow these uh, guidelines or framework of UDL. And that is that you are encouraging students to find the way that they interact the best that's most effective for them which means as an instructor you have to have multiple ways in trying to reach them every student has different motivations for learning there's different reasons why they're there there's different places from where they came but when they you find a way to get them engaged they'll have that greater desire to learn which will foster community and collaboration and this can be done in a variety of different ways just by creating different learning activities that are based in differing skills so it's not always the same or encouraging interaction with others through the use of technology or in group development or giving a choice of content I saw what you did there with this assignment and that's why i did a video this is all tools that will help create engagement and also create self-regulation and motivation along with it Representation is similar, but it also supports this multiple representation and flexibility, creating differences that allow alternative opportunities to succeed. By having things that are multi multimodal um, and having all materials accessible for visually impaired or hearing impaired, um, having for those that have any kind of uh, other challenges, uh, making sure that there's translations in other languages is even a possibility, or even what kind of your pedagogical, pedagogical, pedagogical approach are you taking in order to present the information and making sure that that's represented in a variety of different formats. Student created materials. I have um, a really good assignment that I do in one of my classes that always goes over well and that's that I have each of the students take a chance to teach one of the units instead of me but they do it in a group so they have to pull together and bring this information and then come back and present it to the class um, they become really knowledgeable in this one particular thing and then they're required to uh, write down questions that they have from the other presentation so they really kind of have to study it they also develop their midterm from it I feel like in this way, I'm using a lot of student created materials, combining multimodal sources of information to check for understanding and comprehension of key concepts. Action and expression. Um, the action and expression demonstrates learning through these various formats. So it's not just tests that the grades are based on, not just written assignments. Um, finding, creating, using, and organizing information, incorporating the variety of tools and technologies allows students to say they may understand something. Just because they can't take a test doesn't mean they don't know what they're doing. I picked out my favorites from this. You notice that this is organized like sticky notes. When I get these exciting moments of inspiration, I put sticky notes all over my wall. I would show you the picture, but trust me, they're there in all the different colors. And so I'm pulling out just the things I thought in, in this first module that stood out to me, and that's provide variety of ways to learn. That creates variety of opportunities to succeed. And the finding, creating, and using, and organizing information. Learning is so much more interesting than just regurgitating stuff you memorize by doing the reading. Um, you know, having a PhD and three masters, I've been to school forever, like forever. I've been in so many classes. When I finally finished, I'm like, well, now what do I do? And I realized that learning is everywhere. But beyond that, the classes that just had regurgitation of lecture, 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 write, 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 test, 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 
I don't even remember the names of the instructors or anything I learned in those classes because they just don't matter. I checked off a box that I got credit for it, uh, that now I can put that towards the degree I'm getting, but they didn't matter to me. The ones that mattered to me were the ones that I got engaged with, that there was something that I got to participate with, whether it be in group projects with community and collaboration, or just because I was allowed to express myself, that I had more fun, that it was more interesting and more effective. So where am I at now with this? Why not make it fun? That's what I say. And I'm going to say some examples of how I can incorporate UDL or how I'm already doing it, actually. Um, I'm lucky enough to teach game development. I I say that all the time. Like, I get so proud when I meet somebody, uh, you know, whatever, hanging out at a friend's house, family event, Las Vegas even. What do you do? Oh, I'm a professor of game development. Yeah, it sounds like I'm bragging. Want to know why? Because I think it's the coolest thing in the world. Game development inherently combines all this stuff. And so game development is like something that the students are passionate about, they're interested in, they're engaged in it. And we can do a lot of different modalities because it incorporates art and logic and creativity and fun and so many things. Um, so in game development, one of the things that we do is we have hands-on and cooperative activities. By cooperative activities, I mean that we develop teams and each of those teams, somebody has a different job. So they're not all work they're working on the same common goal, but they're not all working on the same individual aspect of that common goal. Those cooperative activities help give them some sort of an identity. In fact, they go one step beyond that and have them develop a team name. And then they're supposed to wear something to class that identifies that they're in that team. They get extra credit if they do. In the past, they've chosen to make buttons and everybody wore a button to class. Um, one team had top hat or uh, ball caps that they just wrote on in markers. Um, another team had t-shirts printed, so they got kind of elaborate. But in this way, they had an identity for their group. Within the group, they were able to, one person is an artist, one person is a level designer, one person is a programmer, one person does music. And so um, you get into having each person do their own little jobs, and then there's a project manager who's going to pull it all together. So in this way, it feels like they're running a game company incorporating really real life. Another thing that I do is I always celebrate differences, encourage creativity, embrace the silly. Um, I say that actually, but, but for example, I'll send them on a project. I'll look up, there's a weird wacky holiday <laughs> and every day of the year, there really is. You can look it up. So I'll, today is national potato chip day. And so I want you to create a game that involves potato chips and, you know, make it fun and see if you can get people to laugh. And so, um, that's one thing. And then in, in like uh, another assignment that they really enjoy is um, how we'll pick a different culture and show how games are represented different in different countries and um, in different cultures. And then how could how would you change what how would you change this game to be more fitting of that culture? And and so uh, that's some of the things that I do. Uh, I think that answers all the questions. Have a good day. <laughs>